What up, Gotham Guardians and Arkham Adversaries? I'm your host, Trey, and welcome back to the Bat Channel, your main hub for all things Batman. I have a special giveaway for you guys. All you have to do is share this video and tweet my account, my personal account, at Trey Austin Music, or if you're on Facebook, just tag the Bat Channel. We'll put all those in the description below. If you guys share it and tag me, I'll randomly pick one of you to receive this really cool poster from Victor Koo, who was personally chosen from Zack Snyder himself for the winner of the Fan Justice League poster. Here it is right here. This video right now doesn't do it quite justice, but it has that metallic look to it. It's going to be it's so cool. I have one myself. I even have the really big one in my room. This could be yours. All you have to do is share the video. Thank you guys so much for your support. Question. How do we call? He gave us a signal. Is upon us this weekend I, I I'm stoked I'm so stoked but before we get into that as we start preparing for DC fandom we're gonna do an abbreviated episode and talk about uh, what's going on in the comic worlds for Batman Today, we are going to review the Joker War Collateral Damage tie-in in Batman Detective Comics, issue number 1025. It's also titled, Tales from the Joker War, Attack on Wayne Enterprise. The story is by Peter J. Tomazzi. Cover and art is by Kenneth Roquefort. And the coloring is done by Dan Brown. The cover to this is so cool. It's very colorful, which is very different from typical Batman covers. I kind of dig how the Joker has Wayne Enterprise built to this, kind of this, I guess you could say, Joker Playhouse Fort, weaponized fort. It's really cool. But the variant cover by Lee Bermeo, oh man, I always loved his Batman Noel cover, and he continues with that style Batman. Very cool. It's always so detailed. Love it. Lee is amazing. But in issue 1025, we start with Batwoman, Kate Kane. Since the Joker has taken over Gotham, it has become a war zone. And she is assisting the GCPD, who are currently pinned down by heavily armed Joker thugs. The Joker gang has fortified this high ground at Holy Cross Cemetery with machine guns, mortars, you know, just laying down heavy suppressive fire on the Commissioner Bullock's unit. And Batwoman is just, she's going full frontal assault on this clown base. Which, this allows the opportunity for Bullock's unit to advance on the distracted Joker game. And it's all-out war in Gotham City's backyard. It's, it's intense. Very, very action-packed comic, for sure. But during this battle, we flip over to Lucius Fox... Which, if you recall from Batman issue 95, he is currently a hostage and being manipulated by Punchline's toxin from those acupuncture needles in his head. He is currently at Wayne Enterprise, and he's being ordered to assist the Joker game, but he is, like, trying his hardest to resist it. We know how Lucius is. He's, he's always trying to do the right thing, right? But uh, Joker's game is using these Jokerized bat drones to control the streets and provide air support 
at the Battle of Holy Cross Cemetery. Nothing like a little air superiority. Where the Kamish and Batwoman are just about to be fired upon. All of a sudden, Batman appears and takes down the drone using one of his EMP emitters. A really, really cool gun. But we know since issue 981 of Detective Comics, Batwoman and Batman haven't teamed up together. They kind of went their separate ways. So this is kind of a bit of a conflict, I guess you could say, in the relationship. But this is also Gotham's most desperate hour. And it needs the Bat family to give up the bad blood and join forces. Now the Joker has Wayne Tech at his disposal, you know, with the drones, but Batwoman and Batman need to shut down the weapons manufacturing at its source, Wayne Enterprise. Now that they've kind of are going to set aside their differences, they have this kind of really great scene between the two Cape Crusaders where Batwoman is guessing <laughs> is guessing Batman has a contingency plan and he just looks at it and he's like of, of course I do I'm Batman <laughs> anyways a little flash forward the alarm begins to sound at Wayne Enterprise as Kane and Wayne look to make a hostile takeover and send the Joker game packing bursting through the walls the bat tank makes an entrance <laughs> this is some hot sauce right here such a cool nod to Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns where it's the Batmobile in that one kind of has the same design just a lot more uh, firepower to it let's just say but uh, while Batman drives Batwoman is on this stun emitter turret just going off on the clowns they, they are no match for this beast of a tank <laughs> Man, it's so cool. <laughs> I gotta get me one of those. He is in a vehicle. Make it color. Uh, it's a black tank. <laughs> They're able to locate Fox, and he's being held at gunpoint. But come on. Come on. You know you're gonna have to do better than that. Especially to stop the Bat family, all right? Batwoman's able to, to stop the gunman and save Lucius. And he's nearly out of harm's way. But Batman is able to administer the antitoxin to help begin stabilization of Lucius. As Batwoman gets ready to head out and continue the fight of Gotham, Batman tells her to, to, you know, do what he always does. Like, keep me updated. Let me know where your position. I'm going to need you again, basically. And, of course, Kate Kane, being who she is, no bullshit, blunt, very few words, just says, and? Waiting for that word, please. Ah, ah, ah. You didn't say the magic word. Please! Ah, ah, ah. God damn it! And finally, Batman's like, Please keep in touch with me. Like, I'll need your help again. So, I mean, it's, it's just fun that he has those little moments, you know, where, with the, the interaction between different Bat members. I'm not sure he would do that with everyone. But, it looks like Batman got the victory in this battle. But something tells me he will need the entire Bat family to win the war against Joker. The next Joker War tie-in heads underground in issue 1026. Make sure not to get too close to the water though, cause Killer Croc may be lurking. Apparently he's gonna be in the next next issue and it's gonna get all more intense. It's gonna be so cool, but special anniversary issue alert. Detective Comics issue 1027 will be available September 15th. In this mega size 144 page issue. It's like a graphic novel, guys. 
Make sure to get your copy and celebrate 1,000 appearances of the Caped Crusader since 1939. And his legend will continue. It's going to feature stories by Grant Morrison, Tom Keane, who did City of Bane recently, James Tinian, who's doing the Joker War right now, Dan Jurgens, Marv Wolfman, and Scott Snyder with John Romita Jr. <laughs> and so many more. It, it, that's going to be a cool comic. I can't wait. The variant covers, man, did they, they have an A-star list of just phenomenal artists. Each cover is going to be $10 each. And let, let's just take a look at all these cool variant covers. Jim Lee and Scott Williamson do this Superman and Batman cover. So, I mean, so cool. Jim Lee, we, we know, right? Mark Silvestri does the Batman and Joker cover. It's really, really cool. Adam Hughes does a Batman and Catwoman cover. Jim Chung does a, uh, a Bane cover. That's oh, super cool. The details in all these covers are amazing. Gabriel Del Odo does a Batman Scarecrow cover. Like, come on. So cool. The Adam Cooper is a really cool cover, too. I love it's going to be more of the, the horizontal cover than, like, a vertical one. And it, it's amazing. I love, I mean, this kind of depicts, like, all Batman's story. The glass breaking through with the bat. And then you got Robin and Alfred and Bruce and when he was a kid losing his parents. And then you got Frank quietly doing a Batman Robin variant. Art Grimm for Batman and Batwoman. Oliver Copil doing a Batman and Harley Quinn. And J. Scott Campbell doing Batman and Batgirl. Ooh, that, that's a cool cover. I love how they're kind of in the Batcave. So cool. But then you got Lee Bermeo. Come on. Hot Sousy. He, he is, I love that. I love that depiction of where it's Batman, Nightwing, and then in the background you have like old school, like Silver Age Batman and Robin together. That, that is such a cool, such a cool cover. Whew. I, I'm so, so excited for that. I, I literally have all of them pre-ordered through Hall of Justice Comics and Collectibles, which... You can order them through there, too. Uh, make sure you do it soon because FOC is about to end for that. But uh, I'll have the link in the description below for Hall of Justice Comics. They do a live stream sale Monday and Thursday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Hit them up, man. Get those comics. Those are going to be some cool... Even if you just put them on your wall, that's just going to be some cool artwork. DC Fandom! Yes! Virtual Global Experience. 24-hour event this weekend, Saturday, August 22nd, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. My guys, you've heard me say it a million times. Probably should make it a drinking game. You know, every time you hear me talk about DC fandom, that's a shot. That's a shot. Get you guys wasted. <laughs> Jim Lee, Chief Creative Officer, has multiple panels throughout DC fandom where he's even going to review some of the fans' artwork. And he's going to teach you guys how, to, how he goes through his process. Come on, this is so cool. James Tinian is going to be there to talk about Joker Wars. Dave Fentonham, senior editor of book publisher DK, takes fans behind the scenes of the upcoming DC Comics. A lot of the comic book writers... And artists like Amanda Connor, Gabriel Piccolo, they're going to be there to talk about their, basically their origin story of how to get into the comic book business, if that's something you're interested in. This event is so much more than just comics and games and entertainment. It's a celebration. It's a celebration for all the characters we love. This is going to be such a cool event. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. I already have my schedule. I put a link in the comment section. You know, oh man, I messed it up again. Link 
in the section below, Corey, fix this, please. I, I said please, and you didn't fix it last time. You still made fun of me for it. I'm going to get you for that one these times. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. Please, continue. You were saying something about best intentions. <laughs> but I'll put in the link below for the DC Phantom schedule link so you can build your own schedule of all the events you want to attend. I already set mine up. Jason Fabach will be there to discuss the three Jokers. It's coming out at the end of August. We're almost there. We're finally going to find out that five-year-long question of who the three Jokers are. <sighs> DC Phantom, you, you can not miss it. Repeat after me. I will not miss DC Phantom. You don't want to. Enough! Do you want my head to explode? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm your host, Trey. Please like and subscribe and share with your fellow Bat family. Get ready for DC Phantom. I can't wait for our episodes next week. There's going to be so much we got to discuss. <laughs> it's going to be cool. Thank you so much. Don't forget to tune in next week. Same Bat time, same Bat channel.